Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about making your own infusible ink sheets. And this is the perfect project if you don't have a sublimation printer and want to give sublimation a try. Maybe infusible ink is too expensive for you or they don't have the pattern or color that you like. So I'm going to do two different methods for making these infusible ink sheets. And I am going to use Artist Free Sublimation Stamp Pads for one. So that's this little hoodie right here. So I use the stamp pads for the ink for that. So you do need sublimation ink in some form, but not a printer. Then for the shirt I have on, I use their Artist Free Sublimation Paints for that version. And then I'm going to use two different methods for getting the cut out. This version uses a heat transfer mask, Cricut machine, and you cut the design very similar to infusible ink. You may find that this version is a little easier to weave than infusible ink. However, it does have pros and cons and I'll cover those at the end of this video. This version, I'm gonna use the new heat mask from Artispree and it's sort of made like making a sublimation stencil. <laughs> so you cut it and then you use a full sheet of that you painted with the sublimation paint in my case and you put it on top and that mask acts as a stencil when you press. Very cool new product and you can get amazing results with it. So remember even if you don't have a sublimation printer you are able to do sublimation. Now the two files that I'm using for this so I have one that's happy go lucky and the other one says homebody and I do have those for free and I will drop a link for the files I use, so you can drop down there and get those for free, as well as the supplies that I'm using. And I'm gonna drop all of those links in the description below the video. If you're on computer, scroll down, click show more. If you're on mobile, click the arrow to expand the description or swipe up in the video depending on how you're watching. You'll see a list of links, click the ones that you're interested in and either purchase or get these free cut files. Now these are Cricut cut files, because remember, we are making infusible ink sheets with these. So we will be doing this watercolor look here with either the stamp pads or the sublimation paint in this case. So let's take a look at the supplies we're gonna use. I am gonna be sharing a few different methods. I'm gonna be using Artist Brie sublimation paint as well as their sublimation stamp ink pads. Now, you don't have to have both of these. You can pick and choose how you wanna make your sublimation print. We are gonna make it on regular copy paper, so I have a stack of that here. And then you will need probably some paint brushes, regular paint brushes, foam pouncer brushes, just depending on what method you like. Then I do wanna use two different ways to make the sheets. So I'm gonna use just regular heat transfer mask, and I will link to all of these supplies in the description below so you can pick and choose which method you like. This is heat transfer mask. This will make a more traditional infusible ink sheet. Alternately, Artist Brie makes a heat resistant transfer mask and I'm going to use this in a little bit of a different way than this traditional heat mask here. So I'm going to use this in a different way on my mats so you can see an alternate way to cut with your Cricut machine. Then we're going to transfer it to a couple different shirts. I have a shirt, I have a polyester gray hoodie that's 100% polyester, then I'm going to use a lint roller, heat tape, and protective paper when I transfer my design. So now let's take a look at using the paint and the ink. I've done this before here on this channel, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few methods for adding it to your copy paper. And we'll allow that to dry, and then we'll make our own infusible ink sheets. I used the yellow and the blue sublimation acrylic paint, and I mixed, according to the Artist Brie mixing chart, both emerald and sea glass. Now for the sea glass, I did use they're lightning medium. There is no such thing as white sublimation ink, so they do provide a lightning medium to get those more pastel colors. So now I'm gonna use this with some water just randomly all over this sheet of paper. So this makes sort of a watercolor effect and I can get a variety of green looking paint here. This paint is water-based, so you can add water and that way you get more of a watercolor effect with your print. You can leave some areas unpainted for a more distressed look. It is completely up to you and definitely you can get artistic here. 
Then when I'm done with these, I'm gonna allow it to dry completely. So this is a way to use the paints, and you can use them any way you want. Just paint on regular copy paper and allow it to dry. And then we'll take a look at cutting this on our Cricut machine and the methods for that. While those painted versions dry, I have some more copy paper here. I have my pouncer brush, and I have pink and purple sublimation stamp ink pads. And you can just add the ink to your pouncer brush and just kind of rub it on the paper. It makes a really cool watercolor effect and then you can mix and match the inks. You could do this with whatever colors you would like. You can add as much color to this paper or as little as you would like. If you add less ink to the paper, it would be more of a distressed rustic look. If you add more ink, it would be more complete when you add it to your shirt or whatever surface you want. So for both of these, I am doing shirts as my example. However, this same method works the same way as infusible ink. So you can literally make any sublimation project with these techniques. So if you have a blank idea in mind, you can definitely use this. If you don't have a sublimation printer, or even if you do and you're wanting a different look, or just to get a little bit creative. So I'm just gonna continue making these. These will dry way faster than the painted version. So for these, they'll probably be dry just as soon as I finish drawing on the paper. With the painted version, you might want to even heat up your heat press and just hover the heat press over the paper just to dry it. So that often helps dry that paper and get it to where it's ready for sublimation. So I'm gonna wait for everything to dry and then we'll take a look at making these infusible ink sheets. I'm gonna use the stamp ink version first and I have some heat transfer masks. So my favorite heat transfer mask is from Heat Transfer Warehouse. It's what I use for like patterned HTV, um, Caesar DTV, things like that. If you like the Caesar heat transfer mask, by all means, you can use that. It will work as well. So I'm just gonna cut it approximately to size. Our goal is to cover the entire back. This is where we are making an infusible ink sheet, basically. So we're gonna turn this print, again, the stamp pad version is dry just as soon as you make it. I'm gonna turn it over, and now we have the back side. The heat transfer mask is sticky. We're just gonna put it sticky side down onto this piece of paper. Then once it's on your piece of paper, we'll just use a scraper and scrape it down really well. I did mess up, I got it a little bit off, but my print isn't gonna be as big as this sheet anyway, so I'm just gonna trim away this. So this doesn't have the mask on it. You wanna make sure the mask is on the entire thing. And I just have a little corner right there where my mask got crooked. So I'm just gonna trim away that along with any excess sticky areas. So the mask is a little larger than my sheet of paper and I just wanna trim those pieces away as well. So I'm gonna trim all the way around all four sides. Then we can just take this sheet and put it ink side up, transfer mask side down onto our light grip mat is fine and then just press that down well. Now, when I was painting, I did not go all the way to the edge of my sheet. We're gonna fix that when we locate the design in Cricut Design Space. So I don't worry about that, but you could trim away the white areas if you wanted to. I just suggest it within Cricut Design Space. And then you'll notice my bottom is a little crooked because that's where I got my heat transfer mask crooked and I just cut off that bottom portion. I do wanna make sure that mirror is on just like infusible ink, we will be mirroring the design when we cut it. Then after you mirror it, remember we have that white edge around the outside. We will want to move this on our mat to where it won't hit that white edge or maybe just a little bit of that white edge. But do keep in mind, like my copy paper is only eight and a half by 11. I do need to keep in mind the size of my copy paper as I'm moving it around. Then I'm gonna click next. And then you're gonna wanna pick the material setting for the paper you put your ink onto. I'm gonna pick a very light copy paper setting. Remember, we want it to cut through the top layer, but not the bottom layer. So I'm gonna try a copy paper 20 pounds. If you did it on something like sublimation paper, you might go with a thicker paper setting, but you do not wanna cut through that heat mask. And now you can use any Cricut machine to cut this. I'm gonna use my Explore Air 2, and I have the fine point blade installed. And now we can just load our mat. 
press go to cut. When it's done cutting, before you remove it from the machine, you can check your cuts just in case it needs cut through again. So I can lift that up. I can tell it's not cut through the heat transfer mask. So that's one good thing. Now, let's look at some of these cuts. I can tell it did cut through the copy paper. So that setting did work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And let's take a look at weeding this version first. If you've ever weeded infusible ink, you're gonna to wanna to do this in the same manner. So we're gonna to wanna to start peeling back this paper from the corner. We're gonna to wanna to remove everything around the outside edge, as well as things like the centers of letters. You might find it easier on the mat or off the mat. You can definitely try both ways. I sort of like it off the mat, um, just because you're gonna to wanna to move the material quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. And I find that off the mat allows me to move the material. And if it starts ripping, I mean, it is just copy paper. I just pick it up with my fingernail and just continue to weed it away. So now we should be getting to these cut lines soon. And so you can see I've gotten to the cut lines and it's starting to remove. And I mean perfectly. So it's just like if you've cut paper with your Cricut machine, it's just that the paper is on a sticky liner. So you will need to slowly peel it back and just get everything off of this sheet. So I'm just gonna keep peeling this back, removing everything around that outside edge until I have just what I want transferred to my shirt. Remember, we don't want any of the centers of the letters, anything like that. We just want the area we want added to the shirt and then we're gonna take a look at pressing this design onto that hoodie. Here's that project completely weeded. I will say this is easier to weed than infusible ink. You don't have to crack it or anything, it just sort of peels off. But it is like peeling copy paper away from a huge sheet of tape. So it is a little tricky, you do need to go slow. Easier to weed, but still not as easy as vinyl or HDV or something like that. So it still is a little bit harder to weed. So let's look at another method for basically making your own infusible ink sheet. The next technique uses this sheet of masking from Artispray. Now this sheet has a slit down the center and it has a clear liner. You wanna put this, leave the clear liner on when you cut and put the clear liner to the mat. So green side up. And then we're gonna press this down really well on our mat. And we are gonna cut this just like we would adhesive vinyl. So I have my design, I'm not gonna mirror it. However, I do like a little excess area around the outside with this project. So I'm gonna kind of move it where it's closer to the center of the sheet. And then I'm gonna click next. And then we want the premium vinyl setting. So I'm gonna search for vinyl and I'm just gonna pick the premium vinyl setting. So the one that's by itself just says premium vinyl and I'm gonna leave it on default pressure. And then we're gonna cut it. Again, you can cut this with any Cricut machine, just the fine point blade. And we're gonna go ahead and load the mat. And then we're gonna cut this design first. Then once it's done cutting, we'll just remove this mat. Let's take a look at how to use this product. We're gonna use this like a sublimation stencil. So we're gonna remove everything from the inside. I find it easier when it's not on the mat to pick those little pieces up. So I'm gonna remove it from the mat. Again, the backing is still on this product at this point. And then we can just start picking up. And you can use a weeding tool, but it does work really well with just your hands and we're gonna remove all of the pieces that we want transferred to our shirt because again, this is like a stencil. So we're gonna leave things like the centers of any letters. We're gonna leave those in place. So I'm just gonna keep weeding this, getting all my letters out, leaving the centers of letters, and then we'll see how to use this one. 
Here's this version completely weeded. Now, the weeding was so easy. Like it is a super easy material to weed. I really didn't even need a weeding tool. I just sort of picked up the pieces. Cut amazing, weeded amazing. So for that, this one's definitely easier. Now I chose this design for a reason. If you had a super simple design, you could just peel the backing paper off, stick this to your shirt, and complete the process. Because I have all of these little pieces, however, I'm gonna to need to find a way to transfer this to my shirt. I'm gonna try transfer tape, and I am gonna try just regular transfer tape because we're gonna be removing it before we sublimate. And I'm gonna see if that will work to transfer this to the shirt. What I don't want to do is have to place all of these pieces individually because on intricate designs, that could get really, really tricky. So let's go ahead and get the shirt out and see if we can transfer this material. I cut a piece of transfer tape to about the right size. I'm just gonna lay this over and then we do wanna burnish it really well. Just like if you were transferring vinyl, hopefully, um, this will transfer in the same way. So we will find out here. So the slit is in the middle, if you'll remember, which makes it a little bit easier. So I can pick that up and the pieces are sticking to that transfer tape. Now, if they will just stick to the shirt well enough to get this back off, we will be ready to press. So everything is sticking to the transfer tape. So there's one half of that backing off. And then we'll just pick up the other half, peel that back as well. And now everything is just on the transfer tape. So now we're ready to try to put it on the shirt. With the shirt, I went ahead and pre-pressed this just to remove any moisture. We're still doing sublimation here. Um, so I have a nice area here that doesn't have any wrinkles, any moisture, anything like that. And I am gonna go ahead and lint roll this before adding this print because we won't get a chance to. And then we need to locate our design. So locate it approximately in the location where you want it to be. Then we'll just put that down onto the fabric. And then we're going to squeegee it really, really well. Trying to get especially those little pieces stuck to the fabric as well as we can get them. All right, so now stuck down seems to be pretty good. And because this is fabric, it's not gonna stick as well as say a vinyl to wood or plastic or something like that. So you might have to hold the sheet. I find like using my scraper on things like this is beneficial. And then when you get to these small pieces, you need to be very careful and perhaps hold them down. It is sticking pretty well, but you're still going to have to go very slow and be very careful. Make sure everything stays down on your shirt. So I'm just gonna continue this and just slowly peel this back, holding it with the scraper where I need to and peeling back, getting this transfer tape off of my shirt. So this is that shirt, everything's removed. Everything stuck really well. It was just slow. Um, you do have to remove it very slowly. And at this point, you just wanna make sure everything's down. So we're gonna use this basically as a resist. Here's that copy paper that I painted with the sublimation paint. And we will want to kind of remove the excess around the edge because we are gonna want the sublimation print to be inside of here. So this sheet, the sublimation cannot go through it. So we're basically using it as a resist or a stencil for the sublimation. So you've just made a sublimation stencil. And I just kind of trimmed around the edge so that this surface is ready. I can put the sublimation print down and we just need to make sure that this covers all of this. Now, this is dry. You can hover your heat press over it to dry it or just wait until it dries. Then once we have the sublimation print on here, 
we're just gonna tape it into place. We don't want it to move where ink would get somewhere on our shirt here. So I'm just gonna use a few pieces of tape to keep that secure. And then we will want to use protective paper. So I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of protective paper. One of these goes inside of the shirt and the other goes on top to protect our heat press. I'm gonna take one of these sheets, put it inside the shirt, and this will prevent any ink from getting on the back of the shirt. So it can bleed through the fabric and go all the way to the back of your shirt, which we don't want. So we're gonna put one sheet inside and then I'll add the other sheet to the top. This one's ready to press. I'm gonna press both of the shirts at about 400 for 60 seconds. This version is ready, so let's take a look at prepping the other version and then I'll heat my heat press up. This version is just a gray polyester hoodie, so it's just a 100% polyester hoodie. And I'm gonna add my design. Now remember, this was on the heat transfer mask, so this mask is sticky. So now we can just, this one's fairly simple at this point, we can just locate the design and then because it's so sticky, I can just press it down. And this portion's ready to go. Now I do go ahead and add protective paper, both inside and even over the top, just in case. Better safe than sorry. And you can reuse this paper. So for me, it's just extra protection. I can reuse it if no ink gets on it. It's not a big deal. So I'm gonna put one piece of paper inside of this hoodie. Don't want any ink bleeding through. And I'll put another piece of protective paper on the top. So now I'm gonna head to my heat press. You could use this material with an easy press, any heat press that you have. 400 degrees, 60 seconds should work really well. And then we'll come back and take a look at the results. I started with the hoodie and I put it into my press. Now I do wanna make sure since this is a hoodie that the hood is not in the press at all so it doesn't affect the sublimation. And then I went ahead and pressed it again, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And for this version of this method, I like to remove everything hot or at least warm. So I peeled this up right in the press and you can see that gorgeous, amazing design. Here's my project. It's cool at this point. And I can see the hoodie itself, polyester, does kind of discolor with something like the heat mask. So what I do is kind of blend that in. So I'm just using my Easy Press Mini and I'm just gonna go around where that mark is and just sort of blend it out. So all this is doing is making the color of the sweatshirt and the color where the heat transfer mask, making that line not as jarring. So because it's a heat transfer mask, I couldn't rip the edges of the paper or anything. And this is my solution for that. So I can make it look basically where it disappears. So I'm just gonna work on that, on this one. And in the meantime, I can go ahead and press my other version. So let's head to the press and do that. For this one, I added it to the press and again, pressed 400 degrees, 60 seconds, making sure none of the seams or anything were inside of the press to hold my press up off of the sublimation. And then for this version, I went ahead and peeled back the sublimation print while it was warm but I am gonna go ahead and let it cool to peel back that masking. And we will need to peel that off of the shirt because of course it was sticky and it's stuck to the shirt at this point. Now don't freak out at this point. It does look like everything sublimated, but hopefully the mask worked as intended. Now the moment of truth. So you can see it looks like there's sublimation ink in this area, but there isn't any on my shirt. When I get to where the letters were cut out, however, the sublimation ink is on my shirt. So the mask works great. Like I said, it's just like a sublimation stencil. So now I'm just going to peel all of this off, just like you would a sticky stencil for anything else, get the centers of all those letters, and then we'll take a look at the results from this one. Here's everything removed. It looks amazing. So this is the look I wanted for this one. I wanted something that looked worn and vintage even though this is a brand new shirt that I just added sublimation to. And it is 100% polyester, so it should be bright and vibrant, which it is, except in the places where I didn't put as much paint. And then it looks more rustic and worn, so like a worn-in t-shirt 
but in one step. Now I did, again, I had to go around the edges a little bit to remove any press marks. And I feel like the lines are really good. They're sharp and they're clear. I do feel like maybe there's some outgassing and it makes it look a little yellow, maybe in through here. However, overall, I'm really, really pleased with the look of this shirt. So now that you've seen both methods, what are the pros and cons and how does this compare with regular infusible ink? So first of all, on the home body version with the traditional heat transfer mask. So it cuts really well. I find that infusible ink does not cut very well. I also think that this version weeds really, really well, way better than infusible ink. Now it is still slow, way slower than weeding, say HTV. However, it is faster than infusible ink. Now, I did a watercolor pattern with this. If you wanted to you know, a graphic pattern or something with a design or drawings or whatever, you would ha either have to have a sublimation printer and do the same thing, which sort of defeats the purpose of having a sublimation printer. You could just do that design other ways. Or you would have to be really talented with sublimation markers and drawing. So there are places where in Feasible Ink, you don't have a sublimation printer that definitely comes in, depending on the color and pattern you want. But if you are looking for something like this watercolor look, this method might just be for you. Now, what is the benefit of the method I showed with the sublimation stencil, as we're going to call it? So I do think the benefit of that is it cuts like a dream, just like vinyl. It also weeds way easier than even vinyl, I felt like. Like the weeding process was so easy. So if you want something that's easy to cut and easy to weed, sublimation stencil might be for you. However, the drawback of this method is when you have an intricate design is transferring that to your shirt. As you saw, I was able to do that with transfer tape. However, it was a pretty slow process. So it, you will have to take it slowly. It does transfer. However, you might get frustrated at how slow you have to go. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to get to the end result a little bit faster. So if you are like me, then that might be a concern for you, but it probably is with either of these methods or infusible ink. I find all three of those methods a bit slow when it comes to crafting. However, both of these are great alternatives and probably less expensive than infusible ink. I know that this version with the heat transfer mask is extremely inexpensive. And then I have actually the heat mask that I use for the sublimation stencil is a brand new product. So it will depend on the pricing of that because it is just being released like a few days before this video, it will be on the market and I don't have an official price for that as I'm filming this video. However, if you don't have a sublimation printer, these are both great alternatives. And if you already have purchased a sublimation stamp pad or the sublimation paint, this is another way to use those. Now remember, both methods. So this method, I used the sublimation stamp pads. I could use this with the sublimation paint and paint on the paper similar to the way I did this method and vice versa. So you can use any of those sublimation products. So they carry sublimation stamp pads, sublimation markers, sublimation paint. The artist spray carries all these different sublimation ink products that are in alternative forms for those that don't have a sublimation printer or that those that just wanna play around a little bit. And both of these methods can be used with those. So if you want to play around with sublimation paint or you don't have a sublimation printer, this is the perfect way to do so if you have a Cricut machine. And I absolutely adore crafts that combine sublimation and Cricut crafting, so this one is definitely for me. Now I did want to talk about press marks. So this shirt was absolutely fine. I find that the Cricut shirts don't really get press marks. Some shirts just get press marks. And any polyester surface that is a color I usually have trouble with. Um, so what I did with this hoodie is I actually steamed it with a pressing cloth. It probably took longer to make the press lines look close to being acceptable than it did to actually make the hoodie, I'll just be honest. So it did take me quite a while. And that was just my choice of hoodie because I really 
really, really wanted this gray hoodie. Like it, it is, it's, it's polyester, but it's soft and I really wanted it for spring. So it was just my choice of hoodie. If you choose, you know, a different shirt, these Cricut shirts are a good example, and put the home body on there with the same method I did here. You probably wouldn't even notice the press marks or just have a few like I did with this shirt and just press them out with the Easy Press Mini. So my top tip for removing any press marks is the Easy Press Mini. If that is not working, have a little more trouble, steam often will bring them out as well. And then sometimes I'm just not able to get them out at all. And sometimes I do give up after quite some time. So choose your sublimation blanks wisely. That would be my bottom line answer for anyone that's wondering about any press marks that you saw in this video. So if you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. Thank y'all so much for joining me and make your own infusible ink sheets either with Artist Breeze Sublimation stamp pads or Artist Breeze Sublimation paint and I guarantee you're going to love it. Thanks y'all and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.